Hello one and all, welcome to Seen Through Glass. Welcome to the awesome Souvretta House in San Moritz. I got here last night after driving down in my Jaguar F-Type R and I'm here for an event called The Ice San Moritz. Essentially one of the fanciest car events in the world. It's a Concorde de Elegance. So think vintage Ferraris, classic Mercedes, iconic Porsches, etc or parading on a frozen lake, or, or what we hope to be a frozen lake. There's not a lot of ice and snow in Europe this year, so I'm slightly concerned <laughs> about how thick or thin the ice on the lake in St. Moritz is gonna be, but I'll leave that up to the organizers to figure out. I'm gonna finish my coffee, get changed, and then we're gonna head into town to see what's going on in and around this ice event. too overexcited, but based just on the hotel car park, I think today is going to be a good day. There's tons of cars around. It's a whole lineup of DBX 707s and Aston Martin DBSs. There's a couple of G-Wagons, one with a roof box, rock and roll, uh, a Bentley Continental GT, a Bentley Bentayga. I mean, if you don't know, San Moritz is basically the Monaco of the mountains. It's fancy around here and it's not unusual to see nice cars, but I've been here to see Vretta House before and there weren't this many nice cars. So yeah, I'm hoping it's a sign that lots of people have come for this epic ice event. Well, before I head to the ice, I've stopped by what could potentially be my dream petrol station. This is the Myers Manx Cafe in San Moritz. People who've been watching a lot of the podcast content uh, may remember that I actually did an event, a live podcast event, at the Myers Manx Cafe in LA. This is at a Shell fuel station, so literally, it's the dream. Amazing views, cool base, and good coffee. I'm happy. A good way to start the day, that. It's got me wondering, why aren't there more barista-level coffee shops attached to petrol stations? Maybe not enough people care, but yeah, for me, the absolute dream. And what an amazing location out here. Fresh mountain air, sunshine, etc. But anyway, it is coming up to 11 o'clock, so I should probably head to the ice. Okay, this event's a lot busier than I was expecting. This is my first time at the ice St. Moritz, and there are thousands of people here, like thousands. It's gonna make filming the cars a little bit difficult. This is actually day two of the event. It's the first time they've split the event across two days, but I purposefully came on the second day because it's the dynamic day. The cars are gonna be heading out onto the ice track. Not like that, Grickale, but <laughs> the classic cars, the cars taking part in the Concourse d'Elegance for the ice race element where they'll hopefully be drifting around and just doing cool stuff. So we'll try and capture some of that. In addition to that, there are sponsors like Maserati, but also Mercedes-Benz Classic, Ferrari Classic A, I think even Pagani here. So I guess we'll see what they've got on their, on their stands, if they've got stands. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's gonna be hard to get some clear shots, but we're just gonna dive in and find out what this event is all about. Also, I realize it's probably not the Maserati Grecale, but I, what is it, Gracali, Gracali? I don't know. <laughs> you know me in accents, never a good mix. So I just went with it in the moment. Don't hate me. Well, if you're into your classics, those three or four shots just now will have immediately shown you the caliber of cars entered into the Concorde de Elegance. Truly special stuff. Let's start with the amazing Lancia Stratos HF0 concept, which actually ended up winning best in show. No surprises there. The car is actually owned by Philip Sarafim, whose collection I filmed during my trip in LA last year. The Stratos Zero is a 1970s 
concept car, a one of one. It's completely wild that Philip was bashing it around on the ice, but it kind of sums up the event and sums up him. He's a total legend. There was also an award celebrating 100 years of Le Mans, so cars from that class included a Group 4 Ferrari Daytona, an AC Cobra, and a white 1958 Ferrari Testa Rossa. Uh, speaking of Ferraris, there were so many incredible models on display. The 225S Vignali, a 340MM, a 250TDF, 250 short wheelbase competition, and one of the most unique Ferraris ever made, a 126mm slash 212. Now, having driven to Switzerland in my F-Type, I couldn't help but enjoy the unique Jaguar XK120 Yabake record car with its bubble cockpit. It's like a sort of Jetsons car. And whilst the list of priceless cars continues, I have to mention two final ones that really caught my eye. The Porsche 356A Valkyrie Racing, which has been raced across Antarctica, and the Auto Union Type C, basically an Audi Formula One car, which was being driven by Le Mans winner, Tom Christensen. Now, whilst there are some amazing classic cars here, there are also some new cars, including this, the new Maserati Gran Turismo. I mean, I guess we can say new, because it's a bit of a facelift, but apparently, under the skin, a load of work have gone into re-engineering this thing, entirely new engine and various other changes to theoretically make it very different. The looks, though, fairly similar to the car that I think we've all loved for however many years, because I feel like the old generation Gran Turismo was out for about 20 years. Uh, interesting fact about me, my wife Vicky, actually, this is her favourite car, so she's very excited about this. This is the Trofeo, this is the hot one. The big thing which they've done, which I think was essential, is redo the interior. I would really love to have a go in one of these, because it is just so pretty. If it's now been modernised, then surely it's a winning recipe. This is the 7 million euro Pagani Huayra Codalunga, which is essentially a long tail Huayra. Um, this car, unbelievably, weighs just 1,280 kilos. It's insanely light considering its size and the fact it's, of course, got that huge bi turbo V12 engine. Huayra, as I've always thought, are beautiful cars, not my favourite hypercar to drive. I sound completely ridiculous and out of touch to say that. How many hypercars I've driven, I don't know. I haven't driven one of those, the Zonda. I've always, always wanted to. It's kind of like one of my unicorn cars. But yeah, this is cool to see because of its rarity and its insane price tag. And as you can see, it's getting a lot of attention. I'm quickly realising that this event is about so much more than the cars. It's a lifestyle event. Your eyes did not deceive you. That was a champagne bar where the waiters are on ice skates. I saw one of them do a backflip. <laughs> what is going on? All the women are so fashionably dressed. The guys are super elegant. People are smoking cigars and sipping on wine. It's just like, it's just so fancy and it's kind of brilliant. And then you go, oh yeah, between all these very glamorous people, there's a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase. It's like stepping into some weird movie set. I'm kind of loving it, but then I'm also like, what is going on? Everywhere you look, there's something to look at. It's great for people watching. And then the setting is stunning. And this weather, oh my God. But having said that, as predicted on the way down here, this weather isn't helping the ice element of this ice event. There's a lot of water <laughs> knocking around, a lot of puddles. It's making me a little bit nervous. They keep reassuring us, don't worry guys, everything's fine, but can you step away from the puddles? Don't know how thick this ice is, but let's hope it remains thick enough. Anyway, I'm gonna keep walking around. I'll try and show you what's going on. It's super hard to film the cars, but I'm enjoying myself and just trying to, trying to take it in for what it is. Well, look at this. You now find me in a 1925 yeah, Bentley Le Mans car. This is the first Bentley works entry to Le Mans. And yes, I'm in the back. Absolutely, a big thanks to these legends. On the left, Benjamin, you may recognize from the P1 Fuel, we have seen the video where we put the synthetic fuel into my 360 earlier in the year. He can't hear me because it's so loud in here. But we are heading out to the ice track.
Stop looking so damn stylish. Yeah. Stop looking so stylish. Not actually the first time that I've been in a pre-war Bentley, but I'd forgotten how awesome they are. That was an amazing experience, so much fun. But as you can see, I've now left the event and quite a few of the cars are starting to head out. There wasn't a lot of ice left on that lake. <laughs> I think we were all a bit nervy, but yeah, things are, things are winding down in about 45 minutes anyway. An amazing day, a kind of wacky and wild event, but a really, really fun one to attend. I had a great time catching up with friends like Dickie, you just saw there in the Myers Manx. I got a long walk back up to the F-Type, as you can tell. I'm about out of breath. Oh, there's a nice 911 here. It's the thing with San Moritz, there are just nice cars everywhere, especially this weekend. So I don't really want to end the video just in case I come across like a Lamborghini Veneno cruising around. But maybe I should wrap things up. Whether this is the final shot or not, stay tuned, stay subscribed, because lots more adventures to come with the F-Type. Like I said in my last video, this is a little bit of an extended trip and one that's quite meaningful for the Jag, so you're not going to want to miss out on the videos ahead.